smooth health on the drive. It's a global observation that helps raise people's awareness. Insightful tips and information to live in a healthier and happier life. How to prevent it, detect or treat it. Smooth health is powered by Evercare Hospital. Lekki, transforming healthcare in Nigeria. If you didn't know, now you know. This is Smooth Health on the Drive. point one love music love life it's a beautiful day today it's the 10th day in the month of march it's time for smooth health and of course today we're going to be talking about herbs and spices we're going to be talking about their benefits and you know the benefits generally in preventing elevated blood cholesterol and yes hyperglycemia i know that sounds like a mouthful we'll talk all about that in a few more minutes and we're going to open the phone line so you can be a part of our conversation okay today on the show we'll be talking like i mentioned about herbs and spices and joining us on the show uh ready and equipped to answer all your questions and share also insights on today's topic is uh chioma wanko she's a dietitian at evercare hospital hello hello good Hi. afternoon Hi. Okay. All right. So Chama Wankor is a registered nutritionist uh, dietitian who works as a clinical dietitian at Evergo Hospital Lecky. Uh, she holds a higher diploma in animal health and production, a BSc in human nutrition and dietics, both from the University of Nigeria. Chama believes that adequate nutrition is the primary key to optimal health and it plays a key role in the prevention of chronic diseases. Mm -hmm. She's organized nutrition education for mothers and infants as well as young children and um, feeding practices as well as managing patients with chronic illnesses such as hypertension, diabetes, kidney disease and more. She's a member of the Dietitians Association of Nigeria, DAN, and a member of the Nutrition Society of Nigeria as well as the International Confederation of Dietics Association. Choma, welcome and thank you so much for coming. Thank you for having me. Thank you so much for being here. Uh, uh, as always, listeners, you are welcome to be part of our conversation. You can reach out to us on the numbers, which is 0809-444-0981. That's our WhatsApp number. Or you can call live in our studio. The number is 144 We're giving our first three texters or callers vouchers courtesy Evercare Hospital. Okay, so it's uh, uh, your first uh, voucher basically for your co first consultation at Evercare Hospital. So let's just uh, dive right into it, Chuma. Let's talk about the basics, okay? All right. So when some persons hear the words herbs and spices, you know, they think of, you know, seasoning cubes, you know, but amongst other things, really, mm -hmm. what, what is it all about? All right, herbs and spices. Okay, herbs and spices, they are natural from plants. Okay. Okay, so we can be the plant bark, it can be the seeds, it can be the flower. And then these herbs and spices, they have phenolic compounds. The well, phenolic compounds. Yes, they just what are basically compounds? they have this phenolic compound. They help antioxidant properties. Okay. So anti-inflammatory properties. So mm. these antioxidants they help to remove oxidative stress. So those are herbs and spices. We have several of them. It's not bouillon cube or all those other ones. The market we have like cinnamon that is natural. We have like sage, oregano. You see them. These ones are from plant life. Mm can be All dry right. or fresh so what exactly are functional foods because that's a term that actually does come up quite a bit right yes okay functional food okay how is an example of functional food these are food that offer other benefits health benefits aside their nutritional value so they have this positive potential positive effect on the health benefit they have this positive potential mm. potential positive effects on the health benefit aside their nutritional value so when you say functional food mm. when you say functional food we are looking at some phytochemicals some active ingredients in food that target on at body functions you know mm. maybe metabolism of glucose helping in uptake of glucose or some other thing there's several but because we are talking about hypertension hyperglycemia and mm. uh, elevated cholesterol so that's why i'm just all right so basically functional foods are those foods that basically play a vital function yes aside their nutritional value okay. they go beyond they extend right. beyond okay yes. awesome awesome like we mentioned you can call us if you've got a question for our dietitian in the studio today 0144899981 so you've broken down 
you know what functional foods are and we've also talked about you know what herbs and spices are right mm -hmm. now i would like to know what are the roles of herbs and spices in health now you know you talked about how you know they help in well i mean we're going to talk about how they're helping with cholesterol yeah. but then again what are essentially are their roles all right herbs and spices mainly we use it to color our food flavor aroma that's what we know. Mm, mm, that's what I know. <laughs> okay, but yeah, aside that, it has phytochemicals. Okay, take cinnamon, for example. There's a polymer compound that it has that mimics insulin, imitates it. So it helps the uptake of glucose into the cell. So you won't have much glucose running in your blood, mm. thereby having elevated blood glucose. Sometimes you may have blood glucose elevated even when you're not diabetic. So, but if you're taking something, some um, herbs like that cinnamon, so mm. you, you're covered. We're not saying you shouldn't go to hospital when you have these issues, mm. you know. We're saying that prevention is better than cure. Okay. Okay, good. So, these are the roles. So, we have the antioxidant properties, the anti-carcinogenic. We have like turmeric that have curcumin, which helps in, and is more of anti-inflammatory. And you know that cancer like we said carcinogenic is right. like inflammation so it helps and then some other properties like anti atherosclerotic that's just like hardening of uh, cholesterol on the walls of your artery so this turmeric helps too so among other things that those are the rules and benefits of so let's break it down for okay. people that don't cook like there are some men that you say turmeric they're like what is turmeric you know <laughs> let's break it down for them right so okay. so you mentioned um some of the properties that it does right mm -hmm. but what are the other spices that you know what are those spices that are common but are, that people are not really aware of well turmeric is common is our curry course. and then we have thyme okay and mm -hmm. we have cinnamon and we have uh like sage and oregano is not common but we have uh this basil and we call it curry leaf okay right and it goes long way to reduce oxidative stress so if you want to cook sorry to cut you short what is oxidative stress okay when you have uh, free radicals from your fat in your system so there is oxidation of fat okay. and that thing can cause different uh like plague cause inflammation cause heart problem different things so that's why most times they say drink uh, tea most like green tea it helps to remove some of the things so and then so that is oxidative stress i mm. cannot go into the biochemistry <laughs> just to okay. Okay. okay so we hear a lot of people say garlic and ginger are very medicinal are they do these fall on the um spices as well yes garlic and ginger am i forgetting that wow <laughs> okay yeah i have it back in my mind so garlic and ginger garlic most especially helps to repeat uh reduce uh, blood lipids mm. that's triglycerides like and then ginger is anti -nauseatic. that's one that's the one we know it helps when you want to vomit you take it but in terms of uh the topic at hand mm -hmm. elevated blood glucose and the cholesterol it works more on the cholesterol part because it's antioxidant it's powerful so we should use it in our meat cooking meat okay. and then making stew and jello fries then i'm not forgetting bell leaf bell leaf is powerful too mm. you can use it with cinnamon and make it as a tea like green tea and okay. take it for someone that is always having elevated blood cholesterol or uh, having hyperglycemia right it will go a long way so i know that bay leaves is very it tastes very nice in jollof rice so mm -hmm. if i put it in jollof rice am i still going to get the health benefits well yeah but uh, how many are you going to do this how many are you going to you know most times we just put it for food, but it's good they mm. put it in jello fries we eat it all the time but if you're going to take this in as something you do you have to do it judiciously right. like every morning you're taking it as your green tea oh. in the night you're taking it so you are intentional about it mm. Mm. Yes. Okay. All right. So for the gentlemen out there that are just trying to understand what you know these leaves are, these. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Heidi, I know you're trying <laughs> to understand. No, 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 no. I understand it. I <laughs> see. I'm a beautiful cook. So I'm just saying, uh, you can call us, and you know we can break it down for you in details. But um, no, we mentioned talking about hyperglycemia, right? Mm -hmm. And. Um, so a lot of people, including myself, we've heard about that a lot, but we don't know what it means. So doctor, tell us, before we even talk about the, the benefits of all of this, what is hyperglycemia and, you know, what are, what are the roles it plays? Okay, 
Mm. And no one, there's no role, bad role. <laughs> <laughs> so, hyperglycemia is just excess blood, excess glucose moving in the bloodstream. Okay. Yes, excess glucose flowing in the bloodstream. And this can be because of, uh, it's always associated with diabetes. But recently, we see that people are not diabetic and they don't have family history of diabetes. Mm. And yet, they present with hyperglycemia, uh, elevated blood glucose. So, um, we see that most of them they are either obese, overweight, or less active mm. most time. And then some of us that eat a lot, especially eating late in the night. So the body will not actually pick. It doesn't matter your size. It's not about slim or fat. Mm. It's just about bizarre metabolic rate. If your metabolism is not going the way it should, there's every tendency that you have a lot of glucose in your blood. And then if it continues like that and you keep on doing that, you, you see it becomes constant something. So you just have to reduce the carb intake to the moderation portion mm. and then calorie intake too. Because all the same fat and protein will still break down to glucose you know prior to this time when you said you know if if i hear that there's a lot of glucose in my body you yeah. know i'd feel very excited because that means i'm very energetic very strong you know so this is a <laughs> an eye opener this is an eye opener <laughs> okay and also you mentioned something about carbs right so i know that a lot of people are fitness people they will understand but what mm. are carbs you know what are carbs <laughs> All right, carbohydrates that are carbs. Okay. Yes, carbohydrates are carbs. We have uh, bread, we have yam, we have uh, even beans is carb. It has a lot of really? Sugar. I yes. thought beans were protein. Mm, it's in the family of protein, but it has a lot of sugar. Oh. So, and then we have sweet potato, we have banana, plantain. So those are, and then having sugar in your blood is necessary. I want to clear that. It's necessary okay. you have glucose in your blood because your system uses it. But it's when you have it in excess, that's when it's not right. But when you have the exact amount that your cell takes up and uses. Okay. All right. Tell you what we should do. Let's go on a quick break. When we get back, we'll do some more talking. Don't forget, this is Smooth Health on Smooth 98.1. Uh, we have a very special guest this afternoon. We're talking about, you know, herbs and spices. We're talking about their benefits in preventing elevated blood cholesterol and hyperglycemia. And leading us through the conversation is Choma Wanko. So please stay with us. This is Smooth Health on the Drive. It's a global observation that helps raise people's smooth awareness. Smooth Health is powered by Evercare Hospital, Lekki. Transforming healthcare in Nigeria. There's nowhere on this earth that compares. Small, small. Lagos Jam. Lagos Jam. Hey guys, my name is Rachel Kerr and let me tell you about my Lagos. There's nowhere on this earth that compares. From mainland to island to the roadside soya, there's nothing like that. And of course, the sweltering heat from morning till evening. Now in my Lagos, nothing compares to the weddings. Nothing compares to our parties. But one thing I will say is there's nothing like reaching your land of Lagos. My Lagos, your Lagos. Lagos this is Smooth Health on the Drive. It's a global observation that helps raise people's smooth awareness. Smooth Health is powered by Evercare Hospital, Lekki. Transforming healthcare in Nigeria. It's 5.32 and this is Smooth Health on the Drive. Our special guest is Choma Wanko. Choma Wanko is a dietitian and uh, she's speaking to us about herbs and spices and how important they are in preventing elevated blood cholesterol and hyperglycemia. So, uh, Choma when you hear hyperglycemia, it just kind of scares you because you're hyper and it means high, doesn't it? But then another thing that gets a reputation is cholesterol. Right. So, with regards to cholesterol, what actually causes this elevated levels of cholesterol? All right. Okay. Like I said, this too works on the hand. If you are on a big side, that's one side of 
overweight, mm. obese. Then you have a lot of adipose tissue, adipose tissue that's fat depositing the body. Okay. So, and then if you are a sedentary worker and you are not using, you are not sweating out anything. Then if your diet, I wanted it to be the last because uh, what we eat these days are mostly junks. You just sit down and be taking popcorn, take meat pie, take, and this mm. food and then other f- fried food. So most of them, deep frying most especially, the, the carbon chain in the fat may break down from polyunsaturated to saturated okay. and then to trans fat. And these trans fat they are very very bad in the system and so those ones we come back and form this cholesterol and you know our body is already producing this cholesterol and you're right. bringing in extra wrong fat so mm. it will just be everywhere and it's, it's the major one of the major causes of heart diseases you know and some other and inflammatory diseases like arthritis and all mm. so, so basically you would recommend that people not fry their food a lot no i don't we don't don't no fried food you can do stir fry which takes less heat Mm -hmm. but deep frying no Hmm. you can do air fry right yes you can do air fry but mostly it's bake grill and if you're baking watch your fats most people they add a lot of fat so just light and then uh grilling and then steaming and then Mm. poaching for egg but egg is stir fry too you can just turn it you can do pan frying without using oil Oil, that's true yes then you can boil down your stew that's tomato and then add oil that's the best healthiest way to eat all this oil than doing (laughs) (laughs) a lot of oil (laughs) okay wow that's a that's a that's another eye opener because you know there are a lot of nigerians that will just uh, just park your car and say you know madam Mm. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, there's so much things that's fried. And there is a place for monosodium glutamate too, like all this food we buy outside. Okay. Right. A lot of beyond cubes, as we said, can actually cause all these things. You know, when we are looking at hypertension, because elevated cholesterol can lead to hypertension. Okay. So we try to like limit or reduce the salt and the billion cube and all these things are the cost of elevated cholesterol all right okay uh we see we got some messages up on our whatsapp platform we're going to attend to those messages but don't forget 0809 is where you can send your messages to uh i'll say that again 0809 is where you can send your messages to um Okay, uh, Ian, we see your messages, and we'll get to that in a few minutes. That said, though, uh, let's talk about, uh, you know, uh, benefits of herbs and spices, especially when it pertains to cholesterol and hyperglycemia. Now, let's bear in mind, um, some people, <laughs> some people um, are not familiar with some of these. Uh, so, doctor, please help us break it down. Okay. All right. So, um, but I'll still have to talk about some of them like wide so now if you are for health purposes if you want to cook we advise you reduce your salt and maggie how do you do that rosemary has uh, this property of looking like uh, testing like salt sort of so if you can bring in rosemary and uh, ginger and garlic and turmeric and blend it and use it to cook it will help you to be able to reduce your salt and maggie mm. and then what are these benefits of this okay now let's talk about cinnamon i've told you cinnamon before in terms of blood glucose it has a polymer a compound compound in it that helps to imitate insulin so in the sense that it helps it stimulates the uptake of glucose into the cell so what we are saying is that it helps to reduce fasting blood sugar okay uh-huh. so and then we have garlic that helps to reduce blood lipids like triglyceride mm. and then low density lipoprotein which is the bad uh, cholesterol and then it helps to increase the high density lipoprotein is the bad is the good cholesterol mm-hmm. uh-huh. let's so, circle back a little bit right. i want to i want to understand the lipids you mentioned uh, okay. the bad lipids yes is that what you mentioned yeah. what are they okay it's just low density it has low so it floats it's just like it, the density is not much so it's, it can move around and we have the low density lipoprotein and we have the very low density but the only good one is high density lipoprotein what does this mean what does this do oh uh, well the higher density lipoprotein helps to bring down the low density lipoprotein <laughs> <laughs> so the low density lipoproteins are not absorbed by the body they just float, float. around oh 
Yeah, but it's when it's too much that it's, it becomes uh, bad, too bad. Mm. So we, 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 we sh- there should be a proportion. There, there is a range which okay. I cannot say now that it should be in this mm. system. And then uh, we have zobo leaf because we're talking about herbs too. Yes, zobo leaf. Uh, so you can boil zobo and then add cinnamon to it if you're diabetic or if you're experiencing elevated blood glucose or this uh, iPad. Okay, elevated. Uh, blood cholesterol so if you experience any of these things that I mentioned you can boil your zobo with uh, cinnamon then you can drink it cold mm-hmm. I want to, so this one helps to reduce both uh, cholesterol and then blood glucose then be- cinnamon and bell leaf bell leaf that we use to cook jello fries okay you can boil it as hot tea and drink it helps the heart it's for cardio i'm just giving each of them so okay, yes. and the way you can combine them mm. okay then turmeric which is very powerful both anti-carcinogenic antioxidant and anti-inflammatory it can but it works synergistically with black pepper that's it works to, the black pepper makes it to be more absorbable okay uh, so uh, so you can use the two of them as tea so you can add it in your tea if you're someone that drinks green tea you can just drop your turmeric and add the black pepper in it or you can just make it as tea so it helps then cayenne pepper all these are shown but you can we, we let's eat it more it helps a mm. lot it's anti-inflammatory you know that pepper has a uh, and it helps in neuropathy. Yeah, in fact, it helps in the if you're having complications of diabetes and you're having neuropathy. Neuropathy is nerve pain. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yes. So, cayenne pepper can help too. Cloves can help too. Turmeric can help in pain management. Okay. Now, you know, you've called a lot of these herbs, but for some people, it might not be things they're familiar with. Are these things that you can just walk into a market and you call cloves or basil and you can easily find them in the market? Yeah, if you if you walk into markets, you can call, it's the same basil leaf, you say, curry leaf. That's what we know. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Then turmeric is everywhere. Okay. Turmeric, the cells every ginger is everywhere. Garlic, I've spoken about it, is everywhere. Then rosemary, I said about it. If you want to reduce your salt, it helps. You can make it so it's everywhere. Once you just add thyme, and then the bell leaf, we know it. We use it to cook our Nigerian jollof. Mm-hmm. So that's why I, I use this ones. That they, we have fenugreek. I would have, but we don't read that, but it is powerful. Fenugreek helps to reduce the digestion of carbohydrates and calories. So, by the time you, you do, does not digest on time, it helps to lower blood, the influx of sugar in the blood. So, mm. that's uh, the work of fenugreek. But because it's not just something that is everywhere, so right. I didn't mention it. Flaxseed. Flaxseed is anti-inflammatory, so you can chew it. Okay. There are several functional food and herbs and fibers to mention, but a few. So these ones are the one. But I, I know the easy one: garlic, ginger, rosemary, uh, zobo leaf. We see everywhere. Bell leaf, um, and then thyme, then curry leaf. That's the basil leaf, mm. and cinnamon. Please, cinnamon is very necessary. All right, Thank got you. a few messages here. Uh, this one from Ima. Ima says, "What natural alternatives?" Uh, can we use instead of Maggi? Uh, <laughs> okay. And he says, uh, me, I love roasted yam, pepper stew, and pomo. And he says, in fact, I'm going to buy it later this evening. <laughs> okay, so, but what natural, what natural, um, okay. And bear in mind, when I said Maggi, it, it cuts across to all, um, young cubes. Okay. Yes. So, the natural, I, uh, you can use, if you're cooking stew, you can use, rosemary turmeric ginger and and black pepper blended together mm. it comes out it gives it a taste and then if you are cooking soup you can use our fermented product like ogiri right Obey, iru mm. okay. those are the things that mm. they smell place. good substitutes <laughs> yes so that's just about it and then crayfish helps Right, it's crayfish. Yes. Of course. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Uh, Chris, uh, this is from WhatsApp. Chris says, I'm a lover of grilled food. In fact, I can eat any kind of meat grilled. Recently, I came across an article that grilled foods should be avoided. Kindly enlighten us a bit more on this. Should grilling be avoided or are there specific foods that are not good for grilling? Okay, you know that uh, in our society, because uh, we see uh, like suya, 
Mm. We roast it, but it, on a normal, we call it grill. We use open fire coal, charcoal. Right. So that's the thing because the soot will be penetrating on the skin. So we, if you can, um, but grill food is healthy. Uh, when you grill with the other one that is not black yes. charcoal, and then if you on a proper you, grill, yes, on a proper grill, then if you use charcoal then you have to remove the skin if it's fish or something just mm. remove the skin or the meat whatever that's all wait but Shoma, is, are you saying that we should reduce how much sea we eat or cut it out completely uh, if it's possible but but in, it is true because if you walk in the hospital and see the rates of chronic disease you know that you have to be very careful wow. in fact um, before I used to give my patient do flaxseed do flaxseed and I'm not doing it but as of uh, this month I just mm. started and I take it every day you know, when you tell people and they're doing it and they're seeing results why are you not doing it yeah wow mm. All right. Uh, well, we're almost wrapping up this side of the show, uh, but then... Okay, so um, what advice would you give to anyone listening right now when it comes to the consumption of these herbs and spices, especially for people who want to be more active, you know, and want to sort of make it a daily part of their lifestyle, including me for sure? All right. <laughs> okay, I would say that the portion, there is moderation to everything. The portion should be, shouldn't be more than... Mm. Shouldn't be more. Shouldn't be more than half a teaspoon from half a teaspoon to one one quarter. You cannot pass two if you're taking at a time. That's okay. a portion for any spice. That's if it's Daily? powder. Yeah, if you it, that's why I say routine. You just choose the one, pick the one that okay. you can do and be doing it. Mm. And be then, consistent with that. Yes. Then um for pregnant women, I'm just giving advice. Yeah. For pregnant women that have gestational diabetes or hyperglycemia, please don't do zobo. Mm? It can cause spotting. It can stick to cinnamon and bell leaf. It helps. Yes. Then, um, then, please let us all go back to herbs and spices because we already used to all the ones they pack in yes. nylons can we do more of natural natural and uh, like all this one that you know that is the plant back the plant flower and mm. all that you just mix it if it's possible for you to stay in your house and mix maybe turmeric and that it may not mix the way i did but mm. you can mix your own and then get your flavors and then use it to cook so let's do that and help our system our card our heart and our blood glucose Thank all right you. thank you so much uh, just before we let you leave though uh i'm sure that the listeners out there would want to you know contact you at evercare so how can the listeners out there contact you at uh, evercare hospital and uh, you know tell us your address you know your website everything that we should be aware of all right they can come to evercare at number one admiralty way so be so adorous drive don't mind me i'm not your but i'm trying <laughs> Le- <laughs> Le- you're good you're good lucky peninsula skin one okay. Leki, that's so lucky phase one number one admiral two and then our website is www.evercare.ng telephone is 081 Three nine eight five zero seven one zero. I'll call it again zero eight one three nine eight five zero seven one zero. The email info at evercare.ng. Thank you so much. All right, thank you, thank so you much. very much. Once again, it's uh, number one Admiralty Way uh, uh, slash Bissola Drusimati Drive, Lucky Peninsula Scheme One, and also the website is www.evercare.ng. The telephone number is zero eight one three nine eight five zero seven one zero, and the email is info at evercare.ng all right well thank you very much uh choma wanko nutritionist dietitian from evercare hospital thank you all right. for having me thank you so much lagos there's more to come this is the smooth drive on smooth 98.1 it's zibi and kaide smooth health on the drive it's a global observation that helps raise people's awareness every thursday at 5 15 p.m if you didn't know now you know powered by evercare hospital lekki Transforming healthcare in Nigeria.